this year's growth for you is largely a function of decisions that you made last year. And the opportunity for outgrowth may already have passed. Funnel Vision is brought to you by Math Marketing, creators of the Funnel Plan. Math Marketing is the source of the one, two, three of B2B. We all want to grow, and those of us working in larger businesses have growth dictates given to us every year. But the forces that shape the growth that you'll enjoy this year are not out of your control, but they were in your control last year, not this year. I'm going to mix it up a bit this, um, in this week's show, and I'm going to review a book, Jeffrey Moore's Escape Velocity. I've done that before on one of these shows, and we'll see how we go. I'd like your feedback to whether you enjoyed it or not. We're going to review Escape Velocity, and we're going to unpack from the book, how do you create outgrowth, substantial outgrowth, to escape the velocity of the past? Moore argues that there are five forces, or powers as he calls them, we'll come back to that, but five powers that shape your velocity, and in particular, keep you at a certain velocity and, and constrain your ability to grow. And those five powers are what he calls category power. That is, is the category growing quickly? Company power, market power, offer power, and execution power. I want to explain that in simple English because it wasn't until I could explain it to myself that I could presume to explain it to you. What Moore's arguing is that the biggest factor in determining growth is just whether you're in a growth space or not. Think mobile phones versus banking as an example. Is the whole category growing? The, the adage of all boats float in a rising tide kind of holds here. Did you just get yourself into a high growth space or not? Then there's what he calls the, the company, uh, company power. But really what he's talking about is the company's ability to organize itself for growth. And think about some examples here of companies that just are geared up well for growth. And maybe I'd use the example of Apple. And I don't mean the brand. I'm not talking about the market's reaction to Apple. I'm talking about their ability to organize themselves for growth. Next, we get to the market power, and that is the, 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 the brand's um, perception, I guess. So that is the, the market's willingness to let you grow. Do they believe your story? Can they back you? Think about BlackBerry these days. If BlackBerry came out with a cracking product, we would hold back because they so dropped the ball, we'd be worried about their ability to execute on their vision. So that's what he calls market power. Then there's offer power. Fundamentally, are you taking to market something that's compelling or not? And that makes sense. And then there's execution power. The insights themselves are interesting, but how you organize for those insights is what allows you to escape velocity. Shortly, we'll show you how to do this in Funnel Plan. But before that, we're going to do two things. Share with you our conclusions and invite you to receive other blogs like this. Let's get to the conclusion first. Well, firstly, I have to declare that I'm a big fan of Jeffrey Moore's work. His, his work around market uh, maturity, and that is that the strategy that makes sense at a certain stage in the market simply doesn't make sense at another stage in the market, has underpinned most of the work that I've done over the last 20 years. I believe that the truths that he revealed at that time hold now and will forever. He did a great job of explaining to us some simple fundamental truths and to making it accessible. And I loved both Crossing the Chasm and Inside the Tornado. Now that said, I hated this book. The, the insights, so-called, to me were not insights. I'm a reasonably avid reader on matters strategy and I didn't feel that he was revealing any clever new insights in, in the way that, say, Jim Collins has been or what Jeffrey Moore did earlier with uh, Crossing the Chasm and Inside the Tornado. I found also, so 
Firstly, there were not such great insights. It was more that he'd sort of organised collective insights. And I guess that has value, and I should give credit where it's due. But I was looking for something deeper. Secondly, something I just hated about the book was that it was constantly trying to make everything into a noun. Now, to my American friends, please forgive me for saying this. Um, the, the, the need to create nouns just kills the English language. You know, where a verb would do just nicely. What do I mean by that? Escape velocity to me, how can you escape velocity? It's a, it's a verb and it's a great question. But the need to turn this into a noun, let's create escape velocity, which is a particular brand of velocity, just killed the book. Throughout the book, it was littered with such examples where things needed to have nouns where, in the author's mind, but they just, they just killed the simple, simple truths. And that's why I'm frustrated, because the simple truths that he, were tell, he was telling, is telling, does tell, I loved. And I actually liked that he'd organised these, these previously disparate thoughts into a quite cogent argument. The argument's a strong one, and frankly for me personally, a confronting one. The argument is simple. You can muck around all you like with execution, but if the fundamentals aren't right, it's for now. Now, contrast that with work of great guys like Larry Bossidy, who wrote the book called Execution, one of, I think, the business bibles. Uh, Lou Gerstner's famous comments, the last place IBM needs is a new strategy. Well, last thing IBM needs is a new strategy. They're both arguing for execution, and I've been on that bandwagon for most of my professional life. For all that, Moore's right. If you've got yourself in a slow-growing space, you can out-execute everybody, but you're going to be... I won't say majoring in the minors, but your ability to perform at, at, at super high growth is just going to be hard work. Why not get the fundamentals right? Principally, get yourself in a fast growing space. Then, get the company to be capable of harnessing or organising for growth. Then, get the market to believe your story. Then, take an offer to the market, and I think the sequence is right. Then, get, the, uh, get, get your offer to take to market to be compelling and then execute particularly well. Now as somebody who's spent all of his life in the back stages of that, I see this as something of a whipper tail. That is that you know certainly you can muck around with the finer ends, but, but if you get the, the big moves right, that little whipper tail at the end has a compounding effect. But if you fail to get the big moves right, you're going to be mucking around and faffing in, in thin air. So as much as I hated how he told the story, I think his story is a good one. So much so that I am recommending the read, and I'm going to include a link in the show notes um, to read this book as something that you probably want to read more than once. Don't get it electronically. I read a great review over the weekend that suggested you get this in hard copy. So not an original thought for me, but I would agree. Get it in hard copy because you're going to dog ear it. You're going to you're going to take notes, and the a simple point about these five powers that he refers to as a hierarchy of powers. If you like, it's kind of foundational or Maslow's needs hierarchy. Get the base things right, then the next level, then the next level is spot on, compelling, confronting. I thought that all of the work that we were doing really had no effect on that. The funnel plan and the training and workshops that we run around that are really around just playing with that final fifth point. And then I realised great work by uh, in, in a book that I'm going to review a little later on um, called Play to Win, or Playing to Win. And that's, that book really argues the iterative nature of execution and strategy. That is, you make a strategic decision, you get to organising for strategy, and you realise you need to make some changes to your strategy. And that iterative nature reveals some great insights that I'll share with you in a moment. If you enjoyed this blog, then likely you will enjoy others. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to receive this blog by visiting mathmarketing.com forward slash blog or by visiting our YouTube channel. If you have a colleague who may be interested, we would be so grateful if you invited them to subscribe. Why don't you do that now? And when you come back, we'll show you how we do that in Funnel Plan. As you know, the Funnel Plan captures your objectives, strategy, velocity, and tactics for sales and marketing in a one-page plan. 
I want to talk today about some of the uh, uh, iterative elements or the, the insights that Funnel Plan gives that cause us to go back and consider these five forces or five powers that Moore is referring to. So let's take a look at the Funnel Plan and how the planning process would actually shape these five powers. I want to begin with the velocity. Given that we're talking about velocity, that's perhaps unsurprising. But let me take a look at the detailed velocity down here. Let's calculate that velocity. Now what this is doing, if you've not used Funnel Plan before, let me quickly explain. Um, we begin with the objectives, that is how many deals do you need to close over the next three years to meet your revenue targets. What it's going to calculate is how much market we need to generate that rate of velocity. And that's where the first insight comes from. So in this case, to get 140 decisions to make $14 million worth of revenue, or new business I should say, across the next three years, we need 750 odd named prospects in our target market. Now what this is really saying is that after three years of hard work, we're going to enjoy about 20% market share. The lead player in any market enjoys substantially easier velocity than the second, third or fourth player. So have a think seriously about your market. If you were getting 20% market share after five years of hard work, is that, is that describing you as the leader in your market? If it's not, seriously consider whether you're in a category that you should exit. In most markets, 20% is not the lead player. It is in some, in highly fragmented markets, it certainly is. If I look at the marketing services market that Math Marketing also plays in, at least in Australia, um, that's such a cottage industry, such a fragmented market. If we had 20% of the market, we'd be clearly dominant. So think about your market. Would that kind of share, size of market divided by wins, would that represent uh, clearly the number one position? If it's not, think seriously about whether you're in a category that you should be in at all. Next, let's take a look at the strategy that we're going to use in that market. And in particular, I want to have a look at the solution. We asked the question in Funnel Plan, what best solves the chosen problem? And I'd argue that you won't get offer power until you can fully and, and uniquely solve the problem for your market. You need to solve all of the problem and you need to solve it so much better than the next player that your offer has its own power. But hidden behind that is are we even solving the right problem at all? And to answer that, we need to take a look at the problem chosen. In this case, underperforming sales and marketing engine. Well, that's a very self-serving problem because that's the problem that we solve or presume to solve. But whatever problem you have chosen to focus your business around fixing, is it a super high growth problem? If it's not, reconsider whether you're playing in the wrong patch altogether. So it might be that the category is growing quickly, but is the problem that you particularly solve, is that growing fast enough? Finally, organizing your business to be able to achieve growth. That's the company power. Are you the sort of business that can generate overperformance growth, outgrowth, what Moore calls escape velocity. Key to achieving that rate of growth, I would argue, is alignment. Getting sales and marketing and production, let's say, whatever form production takes in your business, aligned around the plan. Are we perfectly, blisteringly clear on the strategy, the objectives, the velocity and the tactics that we're going to execute to achieve those objectives? Because if we're not, we're going to get it out executed. These are all contributions that the funnel plan can help you make and you should be using your funnel plan to drive these more substantial, more strategic changes inside your business. I hope that helps. In next week's show, we're going to take a quite deep look at velocity and the effect that failure, or as we call it, leakage, has on your velocity and how you can improve your leakage rates substantially. Until then, may your funnel be full and always flowing.